All right, good evening, everybody. To those of you checking in on Periscope and Twitter for this evening, we're going to be getting going here in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody for joining us for this evening and taking a look around and seeing what's going on across much of the Mid-South. We do have, again, some fairly quiet conditions out there for right now. We do still have the possibility of some showers and thunderstorms taking place as we get into around the course of the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Got questions about the forecast? Please drop them into the comments section We'd love to know more about where you're from, what the weather's like, where you're at, and things of that nature. So please stop by and let us know a little bit more about where you are. Give me just a quick second here while we get all of our Facebook people in here and let everybody know what's going on across portions of the Mid-South for tonight. If you are just joining us, again, this is live real-time weather from News Channel 3 in Memphis. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with an update as to what's going on with your forecast in the Mid-South area. And so far, so good. It looks like on the internet signal, not having to duct tape any extra tin foil to the receiver, which is always good news. More questions about the forecast, please stop by here, wreg.com slash weather. If you'd like to take a look at some of what my wife is selling, you can find out more about that at her dot dot smile address on Facebook. Had a great sale from earlier tonight, so if you'd like to take a look at what she's got in the way of uh, little dresses for curls and stuff like that, she's got again a great uh, dot dot smile business going on there. Quiet in the mid south for right now. We don't have much going on to worry about again for the time being. We do have some changes taking place though as we get into the course of the next couple of days with what's left of Harvey heading our direction and the tropics are getting pretty active out there as we get into the course of the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Again, forecast information in the blue bar right here, social media here, also up there, and also over on that screen you've got the general idea as to what's going on. Let's go ahead and get going tonight and show you more about what we're expecting out there. Mainly, mainly more cloud cover out there. View from St. Francis camera in and around Cordova. Uh, let's see, no sound on Facebook. I wonder how that's not having some problems there. Let me take a look at that real quick for some reason. Unfortunately, this is the way this uh, audio works on here because we don't have uh, anything in the way of good amounts of audio for some reason on this phone. I don't know exactly why this is not working properly. If anybody has any suggestions on that outside of completely abandoning Facebook, I'll have to see what I can do about that and see what I can do for uh, anything in the way of audio out there. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two. Well, so far I'm not too sure exactly why this is going on, but we do have again uh, the possibility of some more. Let's try that again and see if that's working. Anything? Nope. No audio again whatsoever. All right, let's unplug that. Testing one, two. Maybe we're getting something. Okay, great. So it works best without the audio plug. Who knew? All right. Well, let's try this again one more time, if we shall. Uh, as of right now, again, time is just past nine o'clock on Tuesday. We do again have some uh, audio issues going on. We'll do our best to keep you updated with what's going on in and around the Mid South where it comes to our forecast. We are live again, trying to get things taken care of so that everybody sees a little bit more about what's going on out there. If you have any plans for outdoors, go ahead and keep them for the time being. But this is going to be something again that changes as we go into the next couple of days. If you have not tuned in over the last couple of days, we do have a flash flood watch going on. That could be a bit of a problem, again, for outdoor activities and expecting some pretty decent amounts of rainfall out there. This is what going to be a bit more of a problem out across much of the area. Apologies for the audio difficulties out there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on on radar for this evening, which again does not amount to much out there. We do have some scattered light showers up and around portions of northeastern Arkansas. You can see some of those shaping up right around the Paragould area, also down toward Tuckerman. These things are barely moving. There's hardly anything out there for this evening, so we don't have too much to worry about in the way of rainfall taking place, but there will be better chances of rain over the next couple of days. Again, looking toward the Mississippi River, which you can see quite clearly thanks to the number of insects and birds that are popping up for this evening. And that is a good way to take a look and see where the major waterways are going out across portions of the Mid-South. Beyond that, we don't have much of anything going on in the way of rain and really not expecting all that much for tonight, although there are going to be some chances of some of that rainfall out here. Again, you can see that in the blue bar down here. Showers and thunderstorms are going to be more of a possibility as we get into tomorrow. We'll talk more about that coming up here 
in just a little bit. Let me adjust this real quick and get us to where we need to go to on here. This is what we're going to be looking for again throughout the course of the rest of the next couple of days as we see again the potential for more showers and thunderstorms. But if you'd like to get a neat little idea as to what's going on with the current conditions out across the Mid-South, part of the Wibble Wobble on Facebook, trying to get my camera stand set up there. Uh, go to our Weatherbug page, wreg.com slash webcams. Good place to get more information and see a little bit more about what's going on out across the area, so good deal for information on that. Let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center. Again, we're going to skip some of the regular stuff that we do uh, besides the webcams, obviously, to let you know more about what's going on out there, because as of right now, we are seeing, again, some very interesting conditions taking place. We've got, again, a tropical storm Harvey. It is still a tropical storm. And remember, this thing was a hurricane uh, last Friday, so several days of being a named active storm system going on through here. But here's something of good news. Some clearer skies out toward the west of Harvey and west and north of Corpus Christi in Houston. So we're slowly making its way toward the end of it there. Tropical depression number 10. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Farther out into the Atlantic, we've got a new wave making its way off the coast of Africa. And some good news on this is that as this wave progresses, it does have at least being held back by just a little bit. The atmospheric dust is pretty high intensity out that direction. So the dust coming off the Sahara, that can affect the forecast. And this is where we're going to be seeing hopefully the good news taking place. But unfortunately, it looks like this thing does stand more of a chance of actually getting going into something. And this does look like it's going to be following a pretty good track west as we go into the next several days. So this thing could end up in the Leeward Islands, quite possibly the Bahamas north of Hispaniola and Cuba uh, about the next several days or so. This is something we'll be watching here for right now. Welcome to everybody who's joining us. Tracy Barnes Moore from Bartlett. Alice McGowie, thank you for the sound check. Was wondering there. Uh, Teresa Bircham, good evening. Peggy Speck, thank you very much for the sound check as well. Renee Vaughn Homewood, welcome from Forest City. Thanks for joining us. Michael Tollison, when do we think it'll start raining tomorrow? Uh, we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for your forecast. Taking a look at tropical depression, or well, it's, it's top, tropical depression, it's potential tropical cyclone. A lot of interesting names the National Hurricane Center comes up with. It's not quite there just yet, but it looks like it is going to become a tropical storm somewhere by tomorrow morning. That will be Irma, the I storm for the year, I-R-M-A. So if your name is Irma, that, again, is going to be your storm for the year. Possibly a hurricane by the time we hit very early Thursday morning, but by that time, this thing is going to be on its way east-northeast. And over the course of the weekend, uh, if you'll notice on the maps, as it goes way out that direction, the next point of call is going to be Iceland. So it is not a threat to the continental United States, and this one is going to keep on going. I want to show you the satellite picture here real quick. Uh, this is from the uh, real-time satellite center uh, from the University of Wisconsin. And this satellite shows a very nice thing indeed. What are we looking at here? Well, this is a water vapor satellite imagery. The drier air in the blue colors, the white and the green indicate where the moisture is taking place. And if you'll notice right on down here, a little bit farther to the lower portion of your screen, uh, some blue air, some blue, some very dry air starting to shape up right off the coast. Some of that is preceding Tropical Storm Harvey. Maybe that's going to help it kind of de-intensify a little bit. At least that's what we're hoping for anyway. But the good news is drier air coming in from off the continental landmass is doing a better job of keeping this thing in check. So it is hopefully degrading the storm by just a little bit. And that's excellent news for everyone around Houston. Hopefully the end of the rainfall is in sight. Not necessarily for us, though. What we are going to be seeing as we get into the next couple of days is going to be Harvey making its way, the remnants of Harvey, I should say, more than anything else. This is not going to be a hurricane. It's going to be a tropical depression, it looks like, by tomorrow afternoon, and then making its way right on into the Mid-South area. The storm will, again, rotate its way in here, uh, heading up to the north and to the east. It's going to be going basically right through the Mid-South as we get into Thursday evening and early, early Friday morning. Could be some gusty winds out of this 
possibility of some severe weather. We'll touch on that coming up here in just a little bit. But the good news on this is that by the time it gets here, a tropical depression means it may still have some cohesion, some rotation, counterclockwise spin there. That means we are also going to see, again, the potential of a lot of rainfall coming up from the Gulf of Mexico and making its way into the Mid-South area. Now, the National Weather Service is already preparing for this. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Most of the spaghetti plot models, spaghetti models as we call them for obvious reasons, you might see these before, every single one of these lines represents one computer model's opinion as to where the storm may be going. And you notice that it could go all the way out into central Arkansas. It could go a little bit farther off into northeast Mississippi and northwest Alabama. The median, the main line at this point in time, again, and looks like it is going to be taking the storm right through the News Channel 3 viewing area. Again, it's not going to be strong enough for anything involving hurricane or tropical storm forest winds. Breezy, yes, but beyond that, I don't think we're really looking at too much of anything else. What we are also looking for is the potential of some very heavy rainfall. Now, this graphic from earlier this morning, this will be updated again tomorrow morning. We'll let you know more about that from the National Hurricane Center. Yellow is four inches plus. Orange is six inches plus, and this has changed a little bit from this morning. The six inch column numbers here have made their way into Shelby County, and this is for basically Wednesday through roughly about Friday afternoon and evening. So we are going to be looking across much of the Mid South of at least the possibility of four to six inches of rainfall in the area. Now, the reason why we're mentioning this for right now, again, we'll put up more from the uh, National Hurricane Center coming up a little bit later on. The National Weather Service in Memphis has already posted a flash flood watch for the area. The area is shaded in green from northwest Tennessee, Dyersburg, you're included in this, Oxford and Mississippi, you're included in this, uh, back toward Batesville, uh, Helena, West Helena in Arkansas, St. Francis County, Forest City, Northeast Arkansas, not quite so much, but right through the metro area, that's where we're seeing the potential threat for, again, the possibility of flash flooding into parts of the area. That's where we're going to be seeing, again, the potential for uh, the heaviest rainfall coming on through. And some of that rain, again, expected to be problematic, including the potential uh, for flash flooding. And that's why the National Weather Service, with this graphic on their homepage, is making certain you know a little bit more about what we may be seeing coming our way as we get into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. This is going to be something to pay attention to if you're traveling. If you have any plans for outdoors, excuse the scroll down here for just a little bit. I'm going to pop some information in here so we can tell you a little bit more about what's going on. But while that's loading up, I'm going to switch over here to show you a little bit more about where the rainfall is, and much of it is still down toward the coastline, exactly where it is not needed. But once again, the best news of all tonight, we are seeing an end to the rainfall back around the Houston area. A couple more hours of rain, and then hopefully that should do it, and that should wrap up one of the worst rainfall events in United States history. Hard to believe we're saying that, but some amazing amounts of rainfall going on out there. Uh, catastrophic flooding. Uh, thanks to everybody who was wondering what's going on with my cousin, Anita Parker, and her family. They are safe tonight, so good news on that for this evening. So if you have any questions about that, I'll be posting more uh, updates as I know them coming up a little bit later on. What I'm going to show you here is, again, it's a bar graph, but it's a neat little idea to keep around if you want to check out your forecast and see more about what's going on. Into tomorrow, where was it? Michael Tolleson, raining tomorrow. Uh, here's what we're looking at. Midnight right in here, and then the gray area on screen, that is... Uh, the darkness that we see out there for nighttime represented there. The lightness over here is the daytime hours, and then you see the gray over here on the background. That, again, is nighttime coming on through. So Wednesday morning, some showers possible before dawn. Right after dawn patrol, chances of rain will continue right on in through much of Wednesday. And there were also in those red bars, that's the possibility of thunderstorms out there uh, starting to increase as we go throughout the rest of the day. So Mr. Tolleson, uh, depending on your location for right now, it looks like you're going to have a slight chance to get in some rounds, maybe early enough if you don't mind the rain. But once those thunderstorms start forming, I would get off that golf course. And unfortunately, this is for safety's sake. Uh, I know absolutely nothing about golf, not recommending any 
whatever strokes and play hazards and stuff like that, but best I can do is caddy or putt-putt. I'm very good at miniature golf, though. Uh, this right here it shows the really big increase going our way as we head into Thursday morning, and then it looks like all the way through Thursday and right into Friday, we're going to be seeing the better possibility of showers and thunderstorms overspreading much of the area. And we're talking about the possibility of rain out there. Torrance, Niner, Forever, Lester. How much rain can we expect to get here in Memphis? Again, what we're looking at right now, the current uh, graphics that we're seeing at this time are showing some pretty heavy amounts of rainfall coming on through, maybe about four to six inches. And keep in mind that the six inches here is just the lower limit. We could see a lot more than that uh, coming our way as we get into the rest of the next few days. Could be some areas around there picking up locally about six to seven inches, uh, even seven inches plus in that area. So that's uh, something we could be taking a look at right there. Tracy Barnes Moore, a lot of wind. We could see some gusty winds out there, maybe about 20 to 30 miles per hour. Could be a little breezy at times as that center of what was Harvey moves over the area. And that'll be going through again about Thursday night into that area, but nothing really major uh, taking place there. Charity Rose Ragsdale, welcome from Walls, Mississippi. Mallory Shires, do you think it will actually hit here? Yes. As of right now, according to what uh, the computer models are saying at this time, the center part of what's left of the storm is going to be on its way basically directly through the Mid-South area. These are the models that we use to let you know what's going on. And again, all of these are basically suggestions what the computer models think is going to be happening. When they all line up pretty much just like this, then they're pretty well all in agreement. Now, if they were all over the place, and in some cases, the farther out you go, like this particular map that we're watching that storm off the coast of Africa, notice how you have one line veering off here. We have another line veering off back toward Africa, a couple more going up toward the East Coast, and a couple more going down toward the Leeward Islands. So not great agreement on this one. But for this next system coming on through, uh, these are pretty well stacked up, lined up, and ready to go. So this is going to be uh, something we are going to have to really pay attention to. Now, once again, this is nothing showing up in the way of damaging winds or sticking around. It looks like this thing has finally caught a bit of the jet stream and is going to start moving along a little bit more. That's the estimate at this point in time. We'll see how well that goes at this point in time. Uh, Victoria Fondren, no electrical storms. We'll see what we can do about that, but there is going to be that potential for lightning and thunder out there. Melissa Orr from Walnut, Mississippi, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Kevin Dunn, thank you very much for sharing our video. Please feel free to do so. Let everybody know what's going on in the Mid-South area at this point in time. Victoria Fondren, tornadoes. Uh, that's a good question. Let's take a look at the Storm Prediction Center and show you more about what we're seeing. The best threat for severe weather tonight is going to be down unfortunately smack dab right over the delta and that means new orleans could be getting some problems with severe weather down that direction let me scroll up for just a little bit here and go to the day two outlook which is tomorrow that threat again is creeping toward us by just a little bit we start to see that slight risk category the yellow on the screen that's the best threat from around say vicksburg down to jackson mississippi just north of Mobile, and that dark green area right there, that's a marginal threat. That starts making its way toward Oxford, Tupelo, Batesville, Clarksdale, and that area. The rest of the area just sees the green, light green category. That is just the possibility of just generic thunderstorms, but we're not quite done yet. Just hang on for a second. That is tomorrow. That is Wednesday. Now, if I can get this computer to do what it says it's going to do. As we get into Thursday, this is also where it starts getting interesting. We see the possibility of a marginal threat for severe weather. And so far, it's a little bit early to tell a little bit more about what we're going to be getting out of this. I would guess more than anything else uh, for right now, damaging winds and the possibility of flash flooding. But if there is going to be something like uh, tornadoes out there, we will notice this in the next few days shaping up. And if there is, we will definitely let you know about that. So uh, please keep uh, information about that uh, with News Channel 3. Keep it updated right here at WREG.com, and we'll keep you updated on that. Uh, Charity Rose Ragsdale, what is the level for the Mississippi River at right? Uh, don't have that information lined up here, but you can get that through the National Weather Service. I'll see if I can bring that up there for uh, the rest of the 
the area. Daniel Lee Arada, how much rain through Horn Lake tomorrow through Saturday? Again, what we're looking for for right now is, again, the potential. And this map could change a lot in the next even 12 hours, 24 hours to where we could get a lot more rainfall, a lot less, or it could stay roughly the same. That's why you need to keep updated with the weather experts and other people who work at News Channel 3 so we can keep you updated on this. This is going to be a potentially dangerous event with the possibility of heavy rainfall. Uh, could be again, It's not going to be anything like what Houston saw with 40, 50 inches of rainfall, unbelievable amounts of rainfall in this one event, record-breaking, nationwide record-breaking rainfall from this storm. It's absolutely incredible. And think about, I saw it posted earlier, Death Valley, I think, has received about 50 inches of rain since about like 2004. So that's a decent amount of rain stretched out over time, and Houston has gotten that in the last few days. That's how much rain we're talking about there. Adrian Howard, welcome from Memphis. Uh, Donna Kelsey Faulkner, welcome to the show. Tracy Barnes Moore, prayers for Memphis. True enough, Mike Sadie reminded me of that. Uh, Tracy Barnes Moore, the Tigers football team, will be playing Thursday evening. Could be a wet one out there. Uh, Michael Tollison, glad I could help on that. And uh, good luck on the golf game if you decide to go. But remember, safety first, safety always. Uh, the owner of Gibson's Donuts always gives me a ring when he wants to know if it's safe to play or not. And so try to make certain that he knows that we want to try to avoid the Caddyshack scenario with the guy holding the golf club up during the thunderstorm. And we just really want to try to avoid that if at all possible. Uh, looking at again, turn around, don't drown. Very good from Greg Griffin. Good advice on that one. Uh, do you know if Corinth will be getting rain on Saturday? Billy Franklin, yes. It looks like we're going to be getting some pretty good rainfall early on Saturday. But uh, hopefully everything starts to clear out by the end of the weekend. But there will be some pretty good rain left over at least by early on Saturday there. Uh, Donna Kelsey Faulkner, prayers for all in the thick of it. Very very nice uh, sentiments and definitely considering what's going on uh, down that direction. I've got friends from high school and of course my cousin Anita is down there, but they are safe at this time, so good news there. Natalie Lansdell, thank you very much for joining us. Bozo Wolfolk, as always, thanks for joining us from Senatobia. Tipton Traffic, Tipton County, usual roads underwater. Lucado, hope I'm saying that right. Beaver Creek, ponding will be a terrible threat. Very true. No rushing around with stuff like this going on. Plan your destination. If you live, work, or drive through any low-lying areas where the water is going to fill up fastest and the water, the ground is going to be very saturated, so it's going to take a decent amount of time uh, before it just completely f just has everything running off into the creeks and streams. It's not going to take much time whatsoever for those culverts, the ditches, the lakes, and streams to fill up with a decent amount of water and getting, again, some good chances of rainfall out there for the next couple of days. Uh, Torrance Niner Forever Lester, what's going on for Labor Day? Let me switch over here real quick to the News Channel 3 seven-day forecast. Going into next Monday, it looks like uh, the guys at the station, this is not my forecast, I'm just borrowing this because this is what we plug in so you can see this at wreg.com slash weather. Uh, this particular forecast showing again temperatures by Labor Day hitting the upper 80s, so getting a little bit warmer. The chances of rain looks like they are low, but it does not look like they are completely and totally gone at this point. It looks like we've got a, even though we've got some sunshine, it looks like there could be some pop-up thunderstorms going on out there. So we've got a 20% chance out there as we go into Labor Day and the weekend itself. But the good news is at this time, it looks like most of the rainfall will be done by the time we hit Saturday, but there could still be some showers and thunderstorms out there. And again, more about this forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. Let me go back real quick to the maps and show you again what's going on. Well, that's pretty much it for tonight. Not going to be too much of anything else. Lows tonight again for low temperatures. We'll be getting some showers, maybe a rumble of thunder late, and then mostly cloudy skies and temperatures back in the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s and highs tomorrow. Warm, humid, late August in the mid-south. you got a pretty good chance out that direction. Uh, Kevin missed beginning what Tipton expected to get. This is, again, what we're seeing here for the updated potential for rainfall in and around the Mid-South area. Memphis right in the middle of your screen. The orange is 6 inches and up from there. The yellow is 4 inches and up. So parts of the Mid-South in West Tennessee where the heaviest rainfall is concerned in this particular little stripe right through here. And that's 
a pretty tight area for rainfall, so that's in and of itself good news because it's not a widespread huge event. But notice North Mississippi and also East Arkansas is going to be picking up a lot at this point in time. So that is why the National Weather Service has posted this flash flood watch until Saturday. Uh, again, if you're going to be doing anything out and about, lots of extra time, a lot less speed on the roadways, and again, that heavy amounts of rainfall out there. If you live, work, or drive through any low-lying areas, this is what you're going to have to deal with over about the next 72 hours with chances of rain out there. Another one to two inches of rain Wednesday night into Thursday, another two inches of rain Thursday into Friday, and maybe another inch or two of rain right after that. So this is going to be a fairly gradual thing as what's left of Harvey begins to make its way up this direction and into the Mid-South. That's going to be about the main thing right there. Uh, Bozo Woolfolk, Senatobi going to get some rain? Yes, absolutely at this time. Kevin Dunn, not specifically historic for the Mid-South area. We'll get some pretty good amounts of it, but this is by no means uh, anything like what we got when Hurricane Katrina came through. With some areas picking up about 10 inches of rainfall. Not the uh, main thing at this time, but it's going to be decent out there. There's no question about that where it comes to the rainfall. So again, maybe not uh, historic record-breaking, nowhere near what they're getting down in Texas. So good news on that at this point in time. Kari A. Rich Rodriguez, Brittany Manker, please be careful, and that goes for everybody out there too. If you'd like to know more information about what's going on across the Mid-South area and beyond, I try to post as much as I can to my Facebook page if you haven't visited there before. Uh, again, it, ironically, in its own way, it's World Water Week. Billions of gallons of rainfall, and a lot of that, again, it may be fresh rainfall falling down that direction and draining out to the Gulf, but that stuff is filled with sewage and farm runoff and toxic waste from places that the stuff drained away from, oil, gasoline, all kinds of stuff like that. Just think about if you can get access to fresh water. And World Water Week with the United Nations, a little bit more about how important it is to make certain that we all have access to fresh water. Some incredible stories coming through about people helping livestock, neighbors' pets, getting medication to people who really need it. Some inspiring stories are coming out of this catastrophe in South Texas. The Los Angeles Times has a very good series of stories on here about neighbors helping neighbors and doing a great job of doing that. Uh, it's the sunset picture from tonight taken by yours truly. And into the rest of the forecast, again, for this evening, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Some great pictures out there. Thanking Jeff Davis for a nice picture of a sun dog around uh, the Mud Island area. This is a pretty neat story right here. If you'd like to donate dog food, uh, Day and Night Animal Clinic, Day and Night Animal Hospital, I should say, is going to be accepting donations, I assume, of money, but also of food and medicine and stuff like that. And they're going to be sending that stuff, coordinating with the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, ASPCA. They're going to be sending stuff from their place on Summer Avenue, if I'm not mistaken, down to uh, the area in the next couple of days. That's down on my Facebook page. Scroll down and find out more about that if you'd like to donate. A lot of pets in need. A lot of owners need the food that was washed away or spoiled. So if there's something you can donate to both the people out there by going to your local grocery store and or your local uh, pets, they would love to be able to have uh, some help on that. So please make certain you do that. And the, I forget the name of it, is the um, different uh, name of it on here, the uh, Louisiana, the Cajun Navy. If you haven't read the story, this is really cool, uh, telling the people in Texas, you know, we know what floods are all about, being from Louisiana. Great to see neighbors helping neighbors like this. So if you'd like to see a really cool story, that's scroll down on the Facebook page for more there. More information about stuff on my Twitter account that's all available at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3. Please send in your weather pictures. We can't show them on social media if you don't send them, so please send them along to me, Facebook or otherwise. Join me on my YouTube channel for plenty more information there, and of course on TalkBackLiveNetwork.org with Bob and Josh, Monday through Friday morning, my complete News Channel 3 weather experts forecast. And if you can't listen on AM730, listen on the computer, TalkBackLiveNetwork.org for more information on that. Uh, Rachel Patterson, high winds like Memphis experience with the last major storm system doesn't look like that right now it does look a little bit on the breezy side but it does not look like 
we're going to be seeing anything catastrophic as the remnants of Harvey move up this direction. Good question, but it doesn't look like anything like that at this point in time. Uh, Clarence David Walton III, where are we at sea level? Uh, we are about 300, give or take, feet above sea level here in the Mid-South area. I believe it's something like 292 technically, but I know it's several hundred feet above sea level there uh, here in the Mid-South area, so something to I think if that's what you're asking on there. We'll have more on the forecast again coming up tomorrow morning on Talk Back Live. We'll also have more with Todd Demers on Daybreak. And Jim Jaggers has more on your forecast. Uh, stop by Jim's page and wish him luck. Go Jim Go is coming up where he rides all those miles across the Mid-South to raise money for LeBonner. He's training hard for that. Give him an E pat on the back and let him know that it's time for, almost time for Go Jim Go in the next couple of weeks. So looking forward to seeing Jim take off really pretty soon and get things uh, going on that. So say hello to Jim on his Twitter and Facebook pages as well and let him know that we're all rooting him on. We'll have more on the situation with flash flooding coming up tomorrow morning on another weather overtime. And we'll have, of course, more of this coming up at WRAG dot com slash weather at this point in time. Uh, Clarence David Walton the third. Where is the highest point in Memphis? Not entirely sure about that. You'd probably have to ask the city engineering department uh, on that. But I'm not entirely sure where exactly the highest point is specifically. So I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know. But uh, you can get some more information about that later on. I'm going to wrap things up here for tonight. Tons more information coming your way at wreg.com slash weather. And a lot more tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak with Todd Demers. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.